Hi, are you thinking about getting an Ender 3 printer but not sure which one to choose, the Ender 3 or the Ender 3 V2? Stick with me today as we go through and look at both of them side by side to help you figure out which one's the best one for you. See you inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today's video, we are going to be comparing the Ender 3 from Creality against the Ender 3 V2 to help decide maybe if you're looking for a printer, you're trying to decide on a printer, maybe you're considering getting the newer Ender 3 V2. This video is putting them side by side. We're going to take a look at each one, pros and cons and what they have in common. First off, first part where I'm going to start is what they have in common. So the printers are basically the same print volume. They are basically the same size. You get the same printer material, um, weight and everything, and they have a similar design still. They're not, they didn't change the design a whole lot. You only have one Z rod. Um, they did change some things when it comes to the table. The color display has changed, not the same. They both can still switch between 115 volt and 230 volt. So that is one thing that they did keep between the printers and they did move some stuff around on the printer body but still the same parts are there. So the printers actually are very comparable to each other, but there are differences between the printer. And we're gonna start with the Ender 3, and then we're gonna move on to the big differences that come with the Ender 3 V2. And I will give you my verdict of which one you should probably choose at the end of the video, so stick with me. If you like what you're seeing today, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell so you get notifications from new videos from out on the channel. So here we go into the differences with the Ender 3. So in talking about the Ender 3, the original Ender 3 from Creality, I love the printer. It was my first, what I consider my first big boy printer um, when I started this process of learning how to 3D print myself. I had started with a Monoprice Mini and hated the print. I hated that thing for some reason. It just didn't work right. So I bought an Ender 3 and I have loved the Ender 3 ever since I got it. The printer is easy to use. It a little bit hard to assemble outside of the box when you first put it together, but it wasn't very noisy. It wasn't very loud. The software was easy to learn because I use Cura to slice all my stuff. Firmware upgrades were not that difficult, but the design of the printer was kind of awkward. Um, one of the big pros to me about the original Ender 3 as your purchase, one is price. Right now you can get an Ender 3 for about $200 or less. Um, that's because it's the new bigger brother V2 is taken over. So that price is declined. So if you're interested in getting into 3D printing, the Ender 3, if it's a cost issue, the Ender 3 is definitely a way you may want to look at because they have common body designs. And the price is one of the things that, you know, you're getting what you pay for. The other thing that's really big to me about the Ender 3 is customization. There are tons of mods, there are tons of parts all available out there to allow you to change your Ender 3 and customize it the way you want it. The V2, those parts are still being discovered. The printer had to be released before we could start making modifications for it and creating prints to make the printer easier or a little bit better to use. Some of the old Ender 3 mods are comparable on the Ender 3 V2, but there's just a lot more available for changing up the way the Ender 3 works. Um, so that is a big pro and big and a big con to me in regard to looking at the Ender 3. Um, cost, modability, um, and what you can do to upgrade your Ender 3. Like I said, there are parts out there. If you wanna change it to a glass table, you can, you have to buy the part, but it's upgradable. You wanna put dampeners in, you wanna change to a metal extruder. You can do all that, but another con to the Ender 3 is it comes with a pure plastic extruder. So you're gonna see extruder erosion as that filament goes through, it's gonna wear away that extruder mount. You're gonna to have to replace it eventually. You don't have to do it immediately. And again, talking about that bed, um, the Ender 3 comes with the magnetic or it just comes with the bed, um, the layer that you can clip on or you can get the magnetic bed. I think the Ender 3 Pro does come with the magnetic bed. Some of them come with glass beds, but that doesn't come standard on the Ender 3. Again, you are getting what you pay for. They try to keep the printer as low cost and affordable as it possibly can. And that printer is becoming cheaper now which does make this more affordable to get into. And that is a big pro with the Ender 3. So with that, we've talked about the common things between the two. That's the difference and some of the high points for going for an Ender 3. 
Now let's talk about the points for the Ender 3v2. So the Ender 3v2, I really like the new printer. They run about $270, so it does have a higher cost, but you're getting some major differences over the original Ender 3. First off, I'm gonna move on to the control panel. They changed the control panel, is now a color display. The user interface is easier to use and has been cleaned up so it can be used to get more information while you're doing a print. So that's a big change over the small little knob display. You still have to use a knob to go through the display, it's not touchscreen but it does make it where you're getting more information back from your printer and can do things. Now, granted, the control panel doesn't really matter. If you use something like Octoprint, you're controlling it from a Raspberry Pi. Neither one of the control panels matter at that point. You're getting your data from there. But that is one of the major changes is they change that to be a cleaner, smaller, lighter color interface versus the older interface that we have. That also means with that new interface came a new set of firmware. And one of the things that was changed with the Ender 3 V2 is the motherboard is the silent board that was developed purely by Creality and allows, it basically runs for, allows for a quieter running operation of the printer. So that was something else that was changed is you automatically get that quiet driver board where the Ender 3, you're not going to get that. You're going to have to upgrade to that and spend the money to get that. So let's talk about the bed on the Ender 3 V2. So on the Ender 3, you get the magnetic bed or just the lay down part that you have to clip on. And the Ender 3 V2, you get the glass carbonized Creality Ender 3 bed, along with the metal clips to hold that bed on place. So you're not having to use binder clips or anything that to hold your bed in place on the Ender 3 V2. It's built to hold this glass plate in place. Another thing that was added is on the front of the printer of the Ender 3, there's just a big hole. Now, a lot of people would print storage drawers to go into that hole and make storage and everything like that. You're using PLA at that point. The Ender 3 V2 comes with that storage drawer built in, clean and pretty. So the other thing that it does is on the right side of the Ender 3, the power supply is sitting outside of the printer on that right side. They've moved that underneath as well. So everything is underneath the printer now. Nice, clean, and keeping cool. Now, another big change was on the front side of the printer on the left side, on the Ender 3, there's a fan hole and a fan sitting right there. Well, if you would get spider, get the spaghetti strings or anything, that, or PLA that falls off your plate, it could fall in that hole into that fan and make all kinds of racket, break the fan, and cause all kinds of other issues. On the Ender 3 V2, that, that port has been moved and that fan opening removed. So you can't have that problem on the Ender 3 V2. And that fan keeping your motherboard cool can't get sabotaged. So another big advantage to the Ender 3 V2 body design is everything's been moved underneath and kept clean and closed off so matter, debris can't get into your system, which is a big pro for the printer. So another big thing that the Ender 3 V2 has over the Ender 3 is on the Ender 3, there's no real good way to tension your belt. You have to do it by pulling on parts and different things like that. On the X and Y axis of the Ender 3 V2, they actually did put belt tensioners, which is great. You just screw the knob and it'll tighten or loosen your belt on both axes. Makes it really easy to get that good tension and get your belts moving correctly so you don't have slippage or model movement or something like that that could ruin a print. So that was a huge piece that they put into the printer. Now I am gonna circle back to Comet. So with the common, one of the big things I left out is both printers can print the same materials, PLA, ABS, and so on. They're still equal in that regard. They can still print the same things, either one. So as we move on, it's time for, you, for me to deliver to you what I think is the best way to go for this printer. Hang on and we'll get right to it. So if you've gotten to this point in the video, you've heard pros, cons, changes between the two model lines. So let's take some factors into account. The Ender 3, about $200 to purchase that printer now as we speak. Ender 3 V2, it's about $70 more. So it does have a price increase from the Creality side, it's 270 roughly. So there's a price increase of getting what you buy. So I listed off a lot of pros. The Ender 3 V2, it comes with a lot of benefit right out of the box that changes the way of the print. But the Ender 3 is not to be ignored. It is a good, solid beginner printer 
that you can customize and build your way up. Like I said, the Ender 3v2, it's new. A lot of those custom mods aren't out there and available yet. The color display on Ender 3v2, if you're using Octoprint, the display doesn't matter that much anymore. You're controlling it from your Octoprint. And stick with the channel, you're gonna see a video of me putting Octoprint on a printer here before long in the future. So without delay, which printer would I choose? So cost and everything is a factor. Enjoyment, upgrading, making the printer my own is an important thing. If you're just getting started printing and you want it to be an easy, clean experience, spend a little bit of extra money and buy yourself the Ender 3 V2. Now, if you're a tinkerer, buy the Ender 3. That way you can build that printer up to the way that you want it to be. But if you're just getting started printing, want to get started, figuring out what you're doing, I do recommend buying the Ender 3 V2. It's a solid machine. It's got a lot of benefits, a lot of perks, and it's just got a better out of the box experience. If you're curious to see how it's put together, check down below, we'll have a link where I unbox mine and put it together. But I do enjoy the Ender 3 V2. And for a new person, if you're willing to spend a little bit extra money, I think it's worth it for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button to follow more things on the channel. Um, as we do time lapses, other how to's and other versus videos. I am going to talk about the Ender 3 versus the, the CR10 as well. So that's coming up on the channel. And I hope you guys to see you on the next video. Thank you and have a good one.